Okay, so I've just finished reading um, Not A Diet Book by James Smith. I'm not really sure how to review this one. Um, it's a bit strange. It's kind of, I, I kind of felt in one way massively disappointed by it, but in another way hugely kind of pleased with it as well. And if you just give me a chance, I'll try and explain what I mean by that, if I can make any sense of that. Um, I think I was kind of hoping that he would come up with something sort of new, maybe cutting edge, potentially. I, I've been keeping fit training since I was about 10 and I'm nearly 40 now and um, I've always had quite a sensible approach to it really. I've always kind of not been too obsessive about what I eat. I've allowed myself a drink here and there and you know I didn't get too obsessive about body fat and things like that. I just enjoy doing it. I've always enjoyed being active. I enjoy playing sport as a kid and stuff like that so I just kind of kept it going and didn't want to sort of let myself go too badly. Um, so I've always used weights to do that and a bit of running, a bit of skipping, that sort of thing. And I was hoping that he might sort of give me something on in here that I was kind of to bring me up to date with things, I suppose, in a way. Um, but basically, all he kind of says really is what GPs and stuff have been saying for years, which you might say, well, my GP's pretty useful. So a lot of GPs aren't great when it comes to kind of nutrition and health and fitness and stuff. They're quite sort of old fashioned and things. But actually, that's kind of the point is that the old fashioned advice is kind of almost the best in some ways it's like eat a balanced diet try to burn at least as many calories as you take in and if you want to lose weight burn more and if you want to sort of gain weight burn less and don't sort of stress too much about it get a decent amount of sleep although that's something that's a bit more new actually the sleep thing is something that's kind of coming more recently really quite often people have said about sleep not being so important. Although I come from a family of doctors and GPs and they've always said that sleep's important. So I, I don't know, but um, there's a lot of research recently, Matthew Walker, his book, talking about the importance of sleep. And James talks about sleep in this book a lot, which I, I appreciated because I think you get a lot of macho guys, PTs and things like that, who sort of talk like Arnie and say, you know, sleep's for wimps and that sort of thing. But um, he talks about the importance of sleep. He actually says that sleep, getting a decent sleep is more important sometimes than having a workout. He says, actually, you know, feel free to skip a workout sometimes if you're not really up for it and you're tired, just get a, get, get a decent sleep in and recover properly, which is really, really sensible advice. So the advice he gives is really good, I think. It's fantastic, but it's kind of, for me, it just felt as though it's stuff, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it's stuff I've known for kind of years and stuff I've been almost sort of, I haven't been preaching because I haven't done what he's done and sort of reached out to loads of people, but to anyone who knows me, that's the advice I would, I would have given before. Um, you know, what do you want to achieve? Set performance goals, don't be vain, don't be sort of obsessed about how much body fat you've got and standing in front of the mirror and posing and all that sort of crap and steer clear of steroids unless you want to shorten your life and cause yourself damage. Kind of common sense stuff really. Um, but he does put a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, he talks a lot about women's fitness towards the end which is really interesting. I felt a little bit like he was being a bit smooth when he was doing that bit. I kind of thought, you know, he knows he's going to win loads of female fans talking like that. He's being really kind of modern day man sort of thing, which is fair enough. Like, you know, he's a good looking young guy. He's really successful. If that's part of his kind of plan, then fair play to him. I'm sure there are lots of women who think, who think he's fantastic because of all that. There are probably some as well who probably find it a little bit patronising maybe and can probably see through it to a certain extent. I'm sure he would say, what a load of bollocks, I'm passionate about that and it's something I care about. And I'm sure he does, but... It just came across a little bit like that in the book, that he was maybe being a little bit sort of self-indulgent there potentially, but whatever. I think he's done a really good service. I looked at some of his YouTube videos, they're really good, they're easy to watch, easy to listen to. He gives some good advice, like the, I like the fact that he doesn't bullshit. I actually prefer his videos to the book. In the book he's a little bit polite, he's a bit clipped. Um, it, I've seen reviews where people say he's too much swearing and stuff, but I find he's... He's a lot more himself on the YouTube videos. He's kind of coming across as much more blatantly kind of arrogant and stuff. And maybe arrogance unfair, but he's quite funny in in his kind of in in his approach. Basically, he's, he's charismatic in front of the camera and stuff like that. He's he's very good. He's worth. I think it's worth. If you're someone who doesn't know much about fitness and stuff, and you're someone who just goes into the gym and you want to look a certain way, and you're easily led by all the bullshitters standing in front of the mirror slapping each other on the back and giving themselves high fives and stuff like that and lifting as much weight as possible and making as much noise as possible and all that sort of crap. If you're someone who's kind of led by that and the sort of, I don't know, Instagram generation and stuff like that, then this is really important advice to take and it's a really good book and I'm sure it's, it's changed lots of people's um, approach to fitness. 
for me it was just kind of confirmation of what I already knew really and I didn't really know that because I'm any kind of expert I'm not a PT or anything like that but I have been training for a long time I read a lot I've, I've always even when I was a kid I used to read the fitness magazines men's health and stuff like that and what you come to realize is over time is that these studies come out and they suggest one thing then it's just something else and in the end you come to your own conclusion that actually the fad stuff is just bollocks and someone comes up with it and they make money out of it and pe people instantly want something that's going to help them lose weight or pack on a certain amount of muscle but when you put it all together all the different research and all the stuff that comes out you realize that it is just that basic thing of have a balanced sensible diet you know you need a certain amount of fat in your diet protein has been proven to be a good source of energy in terms of keeping up muscle density and things like that Saturated fat isn't great in too much of a dose, particularly if you're genetically predisposed to having cholesterol build up and things like that. The wrong type of cholesterol, I should say. So it's just about having a bit of a sensible approach and, and you can allow yourself certain things. And, and he does say a lot in the book, he says, you know, obviously cut calories and you'll lose weight. But if you cut calories too often and you're, all, and you're going to keep losing weight, you're going to get lighter, your metabolism's going to slow down and, and you're then going to have to eat less as well to stay like that. So it's all common sense stuff, but it's stuff that people kind of overlook, I think. So from that point of view, it was really nice and refreshing to hear it. And he's got a good style. Um, he covers a lot of bases. It's good to hear him talk about these fad diets and kind of telling, you know, calling them out for what they are, really, which is just money-making schemes, really. Although he acknowledges as well that what works for you works for you. So if you've come across something like the 5-2 diet or the keto diet or whatever it is, if it works for you and you're getting, you know, having success with it, then great. I know people who cut carbs and that seems to be for them the only way that they can they can lose weight if that works for them even if there's a placebo effect there or whatever it is like he says if it's a placebo effect that works and it works that's fine but he's just cutting through all the crap it's, he's cutting through the bullshit um it's basically have a healthy approach to fitness set goals that are based on performance rather than vanity you know aim for something you want to do because you want to you want to achieve that you want to achieve a certain lift or to better run around the two mile circuit you've got outside your house in a certain amount of time or whatever whatever it might be I don't obsess too much about weight certain times a year you can put some on Christmas time put a bit of weight on you know, so what as long as you know how to then control it again and I think for me the key the, the one thing he kind of brought to me which was something that I, I kind of realised, but I haven't done myself, is to actually note everything down. I, th we talk about in personal development the importance of writing things down, um, keeping journals, you know, um, keeping on top of stuff, keeping score, I suppose. So he he talks about the importance of tracking things and writing down your cal what 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 you what you're eating, your calorie in intake, and stuff like that. Um, and and if you can do that, and you can get a bit of a picture about what works, what doesn't work, that it just helps you in your mind to come to grips with that sort of stuff basically um yeah it's, it's it's a good book i highly recommend it he obviously gets he gets crazy good reviews that was one of the reasons i gave it a go it's like five stars on audible and don't know twenty thousand reviews or something something like that he seems to be really popular i saw him on good morning britain talking with piers morgan briefly the other day i don't really watch that program very often but i saw him on there um but yeah check him out on youtube he's pretty good he's obviously worked really hard at this and He's achieving a lot now, so fair play to him. He seems pretty funny as well, so good on him.